Hello, young scholars. Happy Earth Day. Now, you know a couple things about me. You know I love being outside, I love national parks, and I love Mother Nature. So you put all three of those together and you get a very special lesson. One of my favorite lessons to do with you guys is to read Dr. Seuss's The Lorax on Earth Day. Now, ordinarily, I would take you guys outside and we'd be sitting out here uh, physically, but since we can't all be together, I figured the best thing I can do for you guys is to read the Lorax to you so you and your family and anyone else can join in and listen to the words of the Lorax, who on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day has a very important message for all of us. So I encourage you, your family, young brothers and sisters, pull up a chair as we take a look at the words of the Lorax. The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town, where the brickle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today, where the Lorax once stood, just as long as he could, before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax, and why was he there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the onceler still lives there. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the onceler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in the lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth-muffled moof. And on special dank nights in August, he peeks out from the shutters. And sometimes he speaks and tells you how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of the rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail, and the shell of a great-great-great-grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count, to see if you paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snow, his secret strange hole in his grooviless glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Down slops the whisper my phone to your ear, and the old onceler's whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snurgly hose and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the swami swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place. And I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the brightly colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade of the, and ate truffle fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the hummingfish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffle trees. All my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they even had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. The instant I finished, I heard a goes up. I looked. I saw something popped out of the stump of the tree that I had chopped down. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. He spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze. I am the Lorax and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of truffle a truff? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped down one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thieve, 
a feed to find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There's no one on earth who would buy a full feed. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the feed I knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up if you'd please. I rushed across the room in no time at all. I built a radio and put in a quick call. I called my brothers and uncles and aunts and said, Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wansler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Wee Hawken. Sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wansler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting thieves, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of the truffle trees. Then, oh baby oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly embedded my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making thieves four times as fast as before, and the Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. I am the Lorax, and I speak for the trees, which you seem to be chopping down as fast as you please. But I am also in charge of the brown barbalutes, who played in the shade of the barbalute suits, and have happily lived eating truffle fruits. Now, thanks to you hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle fruit to go round. And my poor barbalutes are getting the crummies, because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I the once there felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, and biggered my loads. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more thieves, and biggering my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back, I was fixing some pipes, when that old nuance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax! <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffed, and he snarled and he sniffed. Wansler! <coughs> he cried with a crawfulous croak. Wansler! <coughs> You're making such smogulous smoke, my poor swami swans. Why, they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, <coughs> said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. <coughs> they cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where they will go, I don't hopefully know. <coughs> They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about gloppity glop. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gloppity glop and schloppity schlop. And what to do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty onceler man, you. You're glopping up the pond where all the humming fish hum. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gum. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, yap and say bad, bad, bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on just doing what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm fingering and biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering. Turning more truffle trees into thieves, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. At that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle tree of them all. No more trees, no more thieves, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts and everyone all waved me goodbye and jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smuggled stars. Now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backwards glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hoisted himself up and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog 
without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the word unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I have worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the oncelet, now that you're here, the words of the Lorax seem perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares an awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds, and truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from the axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back.